All right, guys, so welcome to 3D Printing 101. This is a series that is meant to as an introduction to 3D printing for the very, very beginners. And hopefully this can be a reference guide for people later as well. So this is going to be split up into uh, three videos. And on the first video, this is the first video, and we're going to be talking about what is uh, slicing, what the slicing softwares are, what the slicing softwares that are available, and then we're gonna make a walkthrough of the Cura um, slicer software because uh, it's the one that we're gonna be using. The next video is gonna focus on your um, normal print settings and usually what we are gonna be using for the most part and how to how to adjust those. And then the last video is we're actually gonna uh, make a print and we're gonna review. Uh, how the print came out and uh, see uh, wh what we can do better and the differences of the different of using different printing settings. Okay, so slicing is basically the creation of a layer by layer tool path for your printer. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna get your model. Um, this is usually gonna come in an STL or OBJ format, um, and you normally either create it or modify it or download it from websites like Thingiverse, Pinshape, My Mini Factory, or you can search it in uh, search engines like Yegi and stuff like that. Uh, once you get your model, you're going to slice it. And you're going to use that's going to turn the STL and the OBJ into G code. G code is basically the language that your printer is going to understand. It's going to tell it what temperature to be at, how much plastic to extrude at a certain point, how fast and where to move on the different um, axes. Um, so to use that, um, you're going to use uh, a slicer. There's different slicers such as Cura, which is the one that we're going to use. That's an open source um, software. It's free, it's pretty powerful, and it's very compatible with a bunch of printers like the uh, Maker Select slash One House slash Can Can Create um, or the um, Lowe's, Lowe's Bot printers, etc. Uh, then you have Simplify 3D, which is very, very popular and it's a uh, paid software. It's very powerful and it's got a lot of, a lot of um, options that you can use. It's for pe usually if you can afford it, it's really nice. It's around $150, but we're going to focus on the open source software because. You know, I don't. We're just starting here, and I don't have a lot of money, so we're gonna do that. And then another popular one is Slicer, like S Slice with the three R. Um, that's another open source program. It's been around for a little longer, I believe. Um, I don't really use it that much, but you can give it a shot. And then after you slice your pro your your model, then you're gonna send it to your printer. And you, that's when you get your actual print with either different materials like PLA, ABS, PETG, nylon, um, hips, whatever. So let's, um, so let's go ahead and do the Cura walkthrough. When you open Cura for the first time, you probably won't see this window. You might go and see this, right? So this is the really basic settings and all that good stuff. Um, well, this is not going to work for us because we're going to want to have a little more granularity with respects to um, what we're doing. Now, be really careful because when you switch from this um, quick print mode to full settings mode, a lot of the times you will lose all the settings that you had here. Like if you had clicked yes back there, um, you could you could lose some of your settings uh, has happened to me before it was a pain to figure it out so be very very careful if this does happen to you and you don't know exactly what got misplaced then what you can do is you can come over here you can do load profile from G code and use a G code that you've used before so let's go over here and let's see this is pretty recent and this will load a previous profile that you had, and that way you don't need to worry about um, having messed up your 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 profiles and your settings in Cura. Okay, so now that we have the uh, controls that we want over here, we're gonna want to 
make sure that you set your machine right so uh, in order to do that you're gonna make sure that you check with your with your printer manufacturer um, you're gonna add a new machine and then you're gonna have to go through all the wizard and whatever um, but for me, this is the Prusa Mendo i3. This is what's going to work with the one how duplicator i3 or the uh, Mono Price Maker Select because that's basically um, that type of model of printer. Um, if you go here in the machine settings, you can get a little more details. But this is a little more complicated. We'll talk about this later maybe. Um, something that's really handy here in Cura is uh, you can go over here to File Preferences and then you can have your filament settings here. This is um, kind of cool because when you load a model, it'll tell you how much filament you're gonna use um, on top of how long it's gonna take to print. And if you write your cost over here, it'll actually tell you how much is the material cost gonna be. So for example, um, this uh, density, um, I found it in the box of my filament. Um, I don't remember what brand it was, but it literally said it there. I'm sure that you could Google what it is. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to keep this. Um, this is for PLA, by the way. And then for my price, I'm using right now Hatchbox PLA. So that cost me $22.99 for a kilo. And you just say, okay. And now whenever we load a, a model, we're going to know how much uh, material it's costing us to, to make it. So now we are going to load a model. So you can either click here or you can drag and drop. So let's just um, model and then let's do the screw mount, right? So this is what we've been working with. Whenever we modify the settings, it's going to update what... Um, uh, like our print time is going to be and the amount of filament that we're going to be using and then this is how much it's costing us, right? This is 12 cents for this. So that's <laughs> one of the reasons I love 3D printing is like uh, once you have your initial investment, it's not going to cost you that much money unless you really want to get into it. Anyway, how do we manipulate the model, right? You can click here you can click rotate, right? Uh, we rotated it. We have we can do it in all three axes. Um, this is your home, right? So if we if we look at the printer from the front, this is what we're gonna see. Um, you can click on it, drag it. You can right click move all around. You're going to be pivoting around the model. If you double click the model you, and you right click, you're going to be pivoting around the model. It's kind of annoying that you can't pan, but you know, it is what it is. Another thing that we want to that we want to think about when we place our model uh, on the print bed is like you're about to generate some g-code and this is how it's going to be printed. So I modeled this to be printed vertically and that's why you're gonna have the least amount of supports needed, the least amount of overhangs, the, and all that. But sometimes you want different properties, right? Because the weakest part of the print is with, between the layers, right? Like the layers can uh, fall apart, and that's gonna be the weakest part. So if so, if I think that I'm this model is gonna be go undergoing some stress, then maybe we want to rotate it. You know, maybe we want to have it lying down like this. And that way the um, the the build the um, layers are gonna be this way and then there's gonna be less shear force going up and down on this axis. Uh, but then we're probably gonna need some support, right? So we're gonna have a lot of um, trade-offs when we're um, 3D printing. So just keep that in mind whenever you're choosing uh, your placement. Another reason to select how you're gonna orient your model is the uh, resolution of the print, right? Because let's say you're gonna print with 0.1 or um, millimeters resolution in the z-axis, then it's gonna be a lot finer than what you're gonna get in the xy. So that's another thing to look at. I also forgot to show you the scaling 
Um, so over here you can um, click it and then you can double the size of your print. Oh, remember, every time you change the size of your model, you are changing it in more than one axis. So doubling the size is not really doubling the size. You're making it eight times as big because you're doubling in the, in the X, in the Y, and the Z, right? So it's make sure you keep that in mind because it's going to take that much more material, that much more travel. So that is a very, very important thing to keep in mind. If you want to change the, um, the scales in a more um, a specific way, then you can unlock it and then you can have uh, weird stuff going on. Um, here, let's just reset it all. And then uh, you can also like, um, mirror the print so that you can have different, uh, you know, if you want the mirror image of it or whatever. Reset all objects. All right, so in case you mess something up, you can reset it like that. Well, that's about it for this walkthrough. Next time, we're going to look at managing your print settings to get a really nice print. So stay tuned for that, and that's it. If you like this or any of my other videos, please check out my GoFundMe campaign. All the proceeds go towards my education. You can click here for that, or if you want, you can do it through PayPal in the description below. Speaking of that, don't forget to check out the description below for relevant links and important details. While you're down there, make sure to leave me all your comments, questions, or suggestions so I can keep making better content for you. Finally, make sure you click that thumbs up and share it with anybody that you think would be interested. And subscribe if you haven't done so yet. You can click over here for other videos and playlists that you might find interesting. See you next time.